Well, hi, and welcome to my shop, and thanks for joining me so much. If you're a subscriber and you're watching my videos as I post them, you know I've been working on a 1937 radio. I'm nearing the completion of that, and uh, it's not here on my bench because I thought today I'd do something that uh, might be a little more fun for me. Uh, the last few days, the weather has been just fantastic outside. And so I haven't been in my shop much, but uh, why don't we take a look at this guy? This, this, look at this thing. And what the heck is this? Okay. If I remember right, these speakers are attached. So, there we go. Let me set these aside. See the microphone in the top right hand side? Look at that microphone. <laughs> wow. There's a microphone for you. Reel to reel tape recorder. I have taken a peek at this already. Um, I uh, have operated it. Uh, not satisfactory result at all. What a beast this guy is. And I think it might be four channels. It might be a four channel tape recorder. The Biocord 2000 Deluxe. What's this say here? Pull this off. Well, that's pretty small print. Why, why would they? It says, Bang and Olson. And then there's another language, Bang and Olson, B and O, Bang and let me pronounce this right, Olaf, Olafson, Olafson. Certainly heard of Bang and Olafson before. And uh, till that, I don't know what language that is. Well, we'll leave this off for now. Okay. Now, I had this operating. How did I manage to do that? Um, I'm not sure I want to operate it, but I'm sure you want me to. Uh, let me just... It's missing one knob. It's got these cool sliders. So it's probably... Well, I won't say anything. This looks like a record player input. This would look like a tape input this looks like a radio input and this is s on s it must mean sound on sound which is interesting and this looks like a speaker volume output volume um it's got some buttons up here i couldn't sort out because i only took a quick look at this before it's got a left and a right channel meter on it which is kind of good i don't see four channels got a din connector here how did I manage to plug this in? Oh, okay. So there's there's the plug-in. I know what I did. I took my cheater cord, which is right here. I also dangerous cheater cord. It is a procedure not recommended. <laughs> I even recommend I do this. Recessed just enough to make it tricky. There we go. Okay, now I, I think I know what this is going to do. It's ugly. This is ugly. I'm only going to demonstrate it very briefly because it's ugly. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. The tape that's on here is my own tape, and I recorded on this tape 30 years ago my two young boys having fun with the microphone on another reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, which I've got in the garage. So I haven't heard this tape, um, probably be 10 years, I think. The last time I tried to play it on the other old tape recorder I have. Okay, a um, few things here. These looks like tone. There's no speakers hooked up, so what are we gonna get out of this? We're gonna get nothing out of it. 
That's okay anyway because we're not going to get anything out of it based on my earlier experiment. Okay, so it's, it's plugged in, but there's no power yet. Where's the... Where, so probably putting this, engaging this into gear is what's going to turn it on, I think, because I can't find a on-off switch. Some unusual looking buttons here. You know, this has a diode symbol above it. Looks like these are record. Record left and right, left and right, one and two. Monitor sound on sound synchro. I don't know what what are you synchroing with? I don't know. Don't know yet. Headphones. But it's a uh, oh yeah, I can put a big good, I can put a big headphone plug in here. Excellent. So here's the gear selectors. This one will engage the motor and start things operating. And this one selects whether you want to rewind, fast forward, or play. And I can't remember now what happens, but it still has the uh, plastic protector on it here. Very good. That's one of the reasons it looks so nice. Okay, let's give it a try. I'm going to apply power. Okay, and put the power through my dim uh, light bulbs, which are just down here. So we'll just keep those in the camera view here and we start it up. Let's see what happens. Uh, how to start it up. It's like, like I said, I don't see any on off switch. So we'll push this up into play. We'll see what happens. Mmm, ugly. How about rewind? Feel it in this. I can feel. I can feel. It feels like gears. You know, it sounds like and feels like gears bumping across each other. Yeah. Now, what about this guy? What's this? Might be a record thing. Because you have to. Why? Why is it got a? It's got a knob with a with a pointer on it. This knob is supposed to be here. Yeah. So if somebody thought it looked better with a knob up here. I guess because you got to operate this all the time. I've got knobs. Okay, my guess is that would put this into record mode. And do I even want to try it because, because I have stuff on this tape. The stuff I have on the tape is right near the very start of the tape. That's just it's gonna be the same thing. Anyway. So I just ram it in there. Like uh Okay, we'll try it once. One ram in, but we're gonna take this off. No. These didn't turn at all, but they're free. They're loose. It has these really nice uh, tensioners here. Capistan. And a rubber wheel that's going to come forward probably when you're pushing this. Yeah, these little mechanisms moving forward. Looks like there's probably a race head here that's going to put like a 100,000 hertz tone onto the tape. To essentially erase it and get it into a nice state. This is the record head. We have two playback heads here. This thing will do a echo. Somewhere on here I saw something. Here it is. Echo. There's a button here that says echo. And these two buttons. One speaker, two speakers. Mono, stereo, I don't know what they mean by that. Okay, what do we got to do here? First thing we got to do is kill the power. You can see the, these were lit up, so I could tell there was power to it. Where's the on-off switch? So every time you plug it in, it's powered up, and that's it. There's no on-off switch. How can there not be an on-off switch? Or maybe it's stuck in a, you know, because of this stuff, it's stuck somehow. Well, I see four nice big screws here. We can, we can lift this off. Looks like all these knobs have to come off. These knobs have to come off. Well, what I'm doing today, I didn't really make it clear, is I'm assessing this for future work. I'm not so sure I'm going to work on it today. Uh, because again, it's a beautiful day. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Um, probably eventually this whole deck has to come off. This whole plate here. I'll have to come off and get at all the parts underneath. Oh, 
It's locked in. I don't think it's locked in before. And how would you unlock it? Just pull it? Yeah, I think so. Has it already been fixed? Is it fixed already? Tap that. I just didn't push it hard enough, or maybe when the motor's spinning, it, it's just not going to. The lock part isn't going to. Isn't going to activate. Well, how hard is it to pull these knobs off? Not very hard. These are metal. Solid metal. Okay. Well, that first step was easy. Chances are what's gone wrong in here could be a, a belt that is, uh, it could be broken or it could just be, uh, well that's hardly, that was hardly on, the, on there. Could be possibly an adjustment. That's, oh, what's this? A setting it must be a, this can't be loose like this for no good reason Is it video? No. well at the moment it's loose for no good reason for no known reason going in there if I got a smaller screwdriver than that easy can it be? What <laughs> usually takes me half an hour to find the right Allen key. Okay, now we're ready. Four screws out. Four screws out. Four screws out. Guessing this is the right thing to do. Probably a good guess. So summer's drawing to a close, of course, everywhere, not, not just here. But we've had a wonderful summer here. Um, with uh, lots of, of really good. It, so I live in the city of Aurelia. 32,000 people here, but it has a nickname. The nickname is the Sunshine City, and I've lived here uh, seven years now, and I can tell you, it is a sunny place. I'll bet you it was sunny here eight out of ten days this summer, and, uh, and not so terribly hot. Pretty hot today, hot and humid today, going up to 30 degrees here, I think. very much. <laughs> That's what happens here. I was hoping we'd see all kinds of mechanism in there. So it powers off so we can see all the parts that are moving. Oh my gosh, look at all that. 
that stuff. Whew. How many little metal plates are there in there that are sliding on top of each other? goes down and over. This goes straight up. There's the locking part right there. There it goes. And it goes over this way. And it goes over this way. Well, it certainly was lubrication in here, which is like it's fairly dried up, but uh, somewhere, like there's no gears here. We need to see some gears and a belt and stuff like that. And I think that would mean taking this plate off. How far do you want to go with this, Jim, today? I want to assess it properly so I have a good idea of what it is I've got. So so I, I can plan the repair for it properly. Or maybe be lucky and bingo, fix it today. Really not very likely. Now what has to come off here? So this big speed control. It's got something in the back. You see we can plug this. That's a good idea. Take my cheater off completely. I you know what I've we got a plug that will fit in here if I go look at it hard enough for it. Nope. I think that's the Allen key. Now, the Allen key I used before is right here. I use the right one. Yes. There we go. Is it different from the oh it's totally different from the others okay get it mixed up now these things you can probably get the plate and lift it and slide it it's probably that that's my guess get it out from under these clear here clear here one two four screws once again four six screws six screws get these the same as the others nope slightly different. So what I'll do is I'll put them in a special spot on my bench and then within about, oh I don't know, 20 minutes I'll forget <laughs> what I've done. I'm going to put this back together I won't know what screw goes where. So we got the long ones up here. We got the shorter ones in here. And look at these little plastic things going on. Bang and Olson. I thought this was a Phillips machine. Are they somehow related? Why did I think this was Phillips? This is B and O on it. There we go. Okay, this plate should lift now. Side. That's exactly how you do it. Just slide it out. Okay, now we're getting a little more, seeing a little more. Look at the back side of this stuff. Felt. Why would they have felt there? Sound absorbance? Okay. Oh boy. Okay, when we look, what do we see? Do we see anything horrifying? Do we see like a spring laying loose? Uh, anything that looks a little weird? Any weirdness in here? Any sign that anybody else has been in here? Yeah, this, uh, 
this creepy thing here. That's a spider. That's been dead for 40 years, that spider. Well, there's all kinds of wheels in here. Oh my gosh. Let's just see how these work out. So, very rubbery. Yeah, these are not bad. These are not bad. This is a hard plastic wheel. This must be the primary drive here. Feels like it's on the motor. It's got quite a bit of weight in it for a little momentum, I guess. Turning freely. Okay, so if we work the mechanical controls, we'll probably see these things jump into place. Then again, this brake came off. This brake came off, did it? Yep. Okay, none of this stuff did anything. Okay, so what if we do, here we go. So we're gonna go fast forward. Go the other way. Cool. I didn't, I didn't go the other way. Go the other way. Yeah. Now, what kind of traction we got here? Oh, that's pretty good traction. Interestingly enough, if you turn this this way, it, it kind of pulls this wheel in here and you get good traction. If you turn it the other way, you actually get poorer traction. Let's go over here. The traction, though, I think is fine. I don't think we're looking at traction issues here. So this is driving, this is driving, this is driving this. This has a rubber band around it. That's to engage with this flat, hard wheel. What a strange arrangement, eh? But I guess you don't want rubber on rubber. That, that must be the problem. You can't have two, two rubber wheels. That's not good. So that's how they did it. So there's a rubber band here, but there's no band here because this is right on rubber. Yeah, these are good. There's another big one down here. They're all good. And there's a gigantic, there's a gigantic wheel here. So hard to see, I think, in the video. But there's a huge wheel. It must be about this big. And that's got to be the momentum wheel. Actually, you know what? It's centered on this. Almost certainly, that's the, uh, the the momentum is what keeps the tape moving very, very smoothly, even though there could be little mechanical jerks going on here and there. Um, maybe the tape is not coming off the spool uniformly, so every time around there's a little grab on the tape. But with that gigantic momentum there, now this has to be soft too. This is not this is not so good. Well, you know, it's not hard like a rock. Okay, depends how much pressure this puts on there. Like this will this will come over and squeeze the tape right there. So this is where the tape is powered or driven right in there. Tape driven here, then it's just fed through. It's fed up there and down around. What's the, no, this is a post for holding that top cover. That's all that is. That, that, and that are posts for that. We have the again. This is the uh, erase head, which just doesn't like a really cheap old tape recorder. This was a magnet that would drag along the tape. But they discovered that if you pre-record a very high frequency, 50, 60, 70 kilohertz on the tape before you record on the tape, like regular audio, you get a much, much, much better result. So this is called. Sometimes I think this is called a bias, which is an unfortunate word that they use to describe that process of putting the 50-60 cycle, kill the cycle, signal onto the tape. They call it bias. Now, that's not confusing to some people. So I'm looking everything over very, very carefully, just trying to let my eye spot anything that might, might be part of the picture. Here's a curious little part. What's this doing here? Like it's, it's clamping down something. Uh, that's very curious. No idea what it's all about. 
So I don't see anything broken, I don't see anything in a stupid place, laying loose, nothing here seems to be out of sorts. So again, we, we, we when, when I left this in, when, when we uh, pull this forward, we hear and I can't see anything here that would explain that sound. What, what would cause that sound? Here, I mean, these are all just wheels. Uh, there's no gears. Where, where, where's the gear come into the picture? Because, uh, so, and, and where is the motor, the actual electric motor? Um, you would think it's, it's, it's gotta be driving this primarily. Where are you, motor? Oh, I do see something a little odd here. Let's get the other. I have a close-up camera here, or another camera which will shoot uh, quite close. So let's switch to that and uh, and see what we can see with it. Now the focus might might not work for us here. Okay, so I'm looking up under. Ooh, there's a little something here too. You can't see right now. I'm wondering what what's this shiny piece up in here? That looks like a belt. like a belt going around that. Uh, let's put some more, more light on it. Uh, I'd say there's a belt there. I wonder if that's actually the motor. Right there. Ooh, well, this is just moving loose. What is it? So the camera's riding on top of this uh, machine, which is rotating on the thing. In case you're wondering what, what's going on with the background, <laughs> you can see a little bit in the camera. Um, so is, is that the main motor coming up? And that's the motor drive right there. And I can see a belt going up and down a little bit when I move this. But this just feels loose, completely loose. Okay, let's put it in gear. Anything happened? I even wasn't looking. It's still loose. Well, mystery. So if I can dig up a uh, service manual for this, I'd be 50,000 miles ahead where I am now. Just switch back here. The thing I noticed was this, these copper pieces. That's really odd. There's another one over here. Why, why, why in heaven's name would they build it like this? It's a piece of paper. Paper here. For reasons unknown, what would be the next step? Oh boy, it looks to me like it gets, it gets pretty ugly pretty quick. Oh boy, you would, you would want to get kind of down down under here, I would think. Yeah, I wonder if the bottom, the bottom come off this. Can we just come at it from the bottom? So this this whole uh, deck is held in with these screws here. They lift the whole thing out of the cabinet. Oh, it doesn't look like it. That's a little hard to believe. Okay, can we uh, can we stand it up here? Oh, oh, that's interesting. There's the wall hidden under here. So there, there's a plate or some kind of information that was glued here. It's come off. But look, here's all the inputs. Oh boy. So these are speaker outputs. There's four of them. These are all inputs. They're all DIN connectors. We've got these feet with screws in them. Now those might be just holding the feet to the cabinet or they could be holding all the guts inside. The whole guts could come out. Or you could take these off. Maybe this whole bottom plate comes off. And then we could see underneath and everything would be revealed. And all would be easy from there. Could that be the case? 
can that be the case about the case? Just four screws. So we can we can find a little of this out without getting into trouble. We just loosen one of these. Okay, tighten it up again. Okay, so it's not there isn't a nut on the other side. If there was a nut, I would have a hard time getting this tight. So so, so we can take it right off. Because there's no nut. Famous last words, no nut gonna fall. So it goes right into there. And what is that? So now I'm going to try to pull the machine forward, like the whole guts. I'm going to try to pull the guts forward on this corner. See if I can get any motion here. This is probably a very rigid machine, so just having one screw loose is probably not enough. Yeah, it's as solid as can be. Okay, now I'll just loosen a couple more. They haven't screwed this, these feet onto this plastic. They screwed it onto the metal inside. So they could easily be doing the job of holding this bottom up. They are. Okay. Let's carry on. Discovered. We can get the bottom off. I guess we can leave the, if the foot stuck on there, we'll leave it stuck. Always fun taking things apart, I find. Down here is where the action is. Putting them back together. Ooh, the whole plate came off. What does it say? Main voltage setting. Okay, I'm gonna put these two feet. Two feet and three screws. How'd I end up with three screws there? Oh, because I left this one on. I took it off. Okay, we'll take the top foot off here. Almost off. I wonder what year this is from. It's transistorized. Probably from the mid, I'd say mid-60s. And I'd say this was a high-end mid-60s reel-to-reel. Oh, now we're in business. Ooh, my gosh. Hey, what do we got here? We've got a little pouch. A little pouch with information in it. Oh, big winner. Big winner. <laughs> Thank you, Bang and Olson. Here we've got, oh, we're in business now. Maybe a few minutes. Just a schematic. Okay, so it's all schematic. And the language is. language voltage is specified or negative with respect to the chassis unless I always indicated so it's got some English in it Wow okay lots of information here but no guide whatsoever on dismantling the machine so oh my gosh how did they fold this who folded this speak to the guy who folded this stuff. Let me stick it back in the pouch. Okay. Well, now we got the machine here. Wow, look at this thing. <laughs> Gripping resistor, big capacitors. Probably uh, output transistor, only one. This thing's at least stereo. sure what that might be because you'd expect to see two or four of those up, up here we've got just circuit board look at look how they're done they're they're clipped in these are clipped in it's a very early attempt at making modular uh, devices wow so you would bring this into the shop and they would say the problems on this board pop it out pop a new one in hand it back to you that's kind of commercial grade behavior, you know? Like if this is a commercial machine, they can't afford to not have it. So it has to be repaired quickly if it gets into trouble. And uh, that's part of it, I guess. Then of course they would troubleshoot the board in their shop. 
and oh there's all kinds of them here there's this one so you know what's got me a little, a little animated here is that these kinds of contacts well are they are they good and there's dozens of them I would not want to disturb these boards or these contacts at all right now because they may be kind of stuck a little bit and in good contact. Corrosions occur, a little, little bit of a patina on these pieces of metal and if you move one of these clips to a patina covered area maybe you're going to have trouble. What if you have trouble on six of these clips? Oh my gosh. You'd have to go a wholesale cleaning process to try to ensure that every one of these clips is making proper contact. You have to do the whole machine and there's a good chance while you're doing it you're actually doing the opposite. You're actually ending up worse off. Well here's the big motor. And big is right. That's a really big motor. It's right central in the machine. Some kind of a, this is the speed switch here I'm pretty sure. Got some fuses hidden away inside. No user serviceable parts inside, but there they are. Kind of look look down the edge here a little bit. And see that there is stuff everywhere. Is this liable to fall over? No, it's not, not liable to fall over. There's just stuff everywhere in there. Oh my gosh. So this this is really the kind of thing that's gotta go back, you know, in the back in the old days back to the manufacturer to, to be repaired or a certified repair shop to work on something like this. You wouldn't take this down to your local radio store. They would chase you away. We still don't see much of the actual mechanism. The gearing thing when I'm moving these levers, it's all hidden in behind these boards. Let's go uh, see what we can find. We'll stick this camera inside there and see what it can see. I don't know what it's going to see. Let's go in the top area here. Yeah, so I apologize for the focus. In fact, I'm going to change the focus. So you just bear with me a moment here. I'm going to. Uh, that wasn't me. Switch this on to manual focus. The autofocus, you know, it, it it decides what it wants to focus on, and when I'm doing this kind of stuff, things are close, things are far. Camera always picks what I don't want. So here we we'll start close. This is me now operating the focus. And what do we see in there? Just piles of electronic parts. mechanism up there. I think that makes sense. Flip back into the camera here. So where would be a good place to try to spot some mechanism? Up, up, up in this way. Okay, we'll do that. We will do that. As soon as I just change cameras here. Don't fall off your chair now because everything's upside down and this way and that. has to be up where the motor spindle comes out. It's going to be spinning the motor and then moving parts here. Just kind of jamming the camera right inside the unit here. It's trying anyway. Okay, so you can see something moving. I'm spinning the motor back and forth. You can see a few things moving around. Okay, now, with that wonderful view, let us operate the selectors here. It's moving way down the way. Is it? That's 
still, I don't, what I'm looking for is something that explains that uh, sound that we heard when I tried to engage the motor. It sure did sound like gears not meshing. I'm going to lay this thing right on its face here. Not the best move. I have to tell you, Mr. Tape Recorder, this could be your last stop. This could be your last chance. So, cooperate with me. These pieces are falling off of it. Okay, how do we get out of this? screws in here have got locking paint on them. Every, every, every screw is locked down. Oddly enough, they're using different colors of locking paint. I wonder if that's a... Down here, they're kind of a blackish color. Here, they're red. Here, these are kind of green. I wonder if that's a, a, a code or a hint to the repairman about what screws you should go after. There's a plate right down here that should slide. If you've been watching a lot of my videos, you know that uh, my father uh, was in the Second World War fighting with the Canadian Army and he landed on D-Day. The reason I'm bringing this up is I just watched a uh, new documentary, a short documentary, um, done about uh, the Canadians landing on D-Day. And uh, what I learned is uh, my dad and the Queen's own rifles landing on Juneau Beach suffered the highest percentage casualty race rate of any landing, including the American Omaha Beach. Now, there may have been more people injured and killed on Omaha Beach, but the percentage, or the chance of you surviving, was worse on the beach my dad landed on at the location he landed on. He landed in the worst possible area. I think, if I heard it right, 65% casualties crossing the beach. I can't remember now. So anyway, it's an important thing to me. Uh, yeah, my, my dad landed in the first boat. I didn't mention that. Uh, when Canadians landed, they landed first 10 boats, and 45 minutes later they landed more. So my dad was in the first boat, and uh, for 45 minutes, it was him and 400 other Canadian soldiers were running around on that beach trying not to get killed. A heavily, heavily defended beach. Oh my god, I, I didn't realize. Every time I watch one of these documentaries, I pick up a little more about what my dad did, because he never spoke about it. He refused to talk about it. I guess for him, he just wanted it to be a, you know, forgotten, just forgotten about. Okay, I get a little emotional here. Now, next step along the way. Oh my gosh, is there even a next step here? Oh yeah, I was looking at this sliding sliding rod, which caught my attention because it has black lubricant, but you can't call that lubricant anymore. That's now just a black smudge. So here's a part that's poorly lubricated. But it does move. It's got quite a strong spring. Retracting it. There's some more parts here that move a little bit somehow at some point. I'm looking for a stuck part. Nothing simple is going to happen here. So over here, I don't know what to make of this. You see a little plunger sticking up. But it's it's part of some kind of I don't know. I don't know. It's part of some kind of I don't know. There's a lot in here that's all part of I don't know. An awful lot. I don't know. So you're kind of reaching the point here where going further uh, really risks the demise of this whole machine. That, that's kind of where we're at here. Don't see an easy way forward on it. Strange part. 
Art. This looks like a relay here. Yeah, it's a relay. Great big uh, resistor. I plan to heat that guy up pretty good. see the way forward now you could argue that well come on all these boards can just pop out so easily why not pop them on because we'd be entering into this territory of uh, now what's not working a very bad territory but that that would and would that give access, whoops would that give access um, not really not really the mechanism the mechanism is way down below this plate the motor rotor is way down below this plate so from this side we're not getting there I think I think that's the basically the idea this plate is the main the main uh, deck or plate of the machine and it's continuous in every direction so all the mechanism must be on the other side now, lucky it's got these nice nice things here you can flip it over and set it down so the, this machine has been built with repair in mind with, with there's no doubt there's no, no doubt about that. And so I think it is a commercial grade machine. Oh, 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 we're losing these little things here. Over you come. So we're gonna go further here on this side. Now I know the motor, the motor is, this is the motor right here. That'd be the motor. So if so, if the motor's coming all the way up to here, then this is the mechanism. This is it, right here. This is all there is, right in here. Why don't we watch this operate now? Okay, how long have I been talking? 40, 47 minutes. I was gonna come in here for 15 minutes, but this is what happens all the time. Okay, we're gonna put this back on. We'll operate this a little bit, and then I think I've probably seen enough going to attach this this way this time. It's a much better attachment. Okay. Not recommended. <laughs> don't 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 do this. Okay. Yeah, I'm not asking anybody to imitate what I'm doing by the way. You're just watching what I do. You decide for yourself what you do with your projects. That's some interesting writing here. What's that say? Age something or other, I don't know. There's quite a bit of writing in here from uh, various, uh, probably inspectors and testers. Checking things out. What's this, this rod back here? Okay, so we're in. Okay, I'm gonna switch it on. There we go. Okay, and the lights have come on here really have come on. Okay, now. Notice the motor is not turning. What am I hearing? What is that? Is that coming out of this? I think it is. Some motor stuck or something, no? It's a kind of sound that's very hard to place. Sounds like it's coming out of one of these, though. I don't know. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna go straight up for play. See if this motor spins. You know, that sounded, that didn't sound like gears. That sounded like a relay chattering. No, no, that last thing sounded like gears. This motor never started, never started turning. Yeah, we'll go on the rewind. The motor never started turning. Is it because it's waiting for whatever it is over here that's not engaging to finish its engagement? Then the motor will start. And that, that sound is terrible. What is that? It's the sound of something burning up. Ooh, careful, Jim, you got a power wire here. It's, it's not recommended, not recommended. Where is that sound coming from? 
I can't tell at all. Let's push some buttons. What is it? Volume stuff? Can't. There's no speakers hooked up. I didn't hear that before. Anybody? Somebody? Oh. Well, that just shut it right off. So this is the on-off switch along with the other. Oh, it's really buzzing. You know that buzzing? That could be a relay. That could be a relay that's stuck closed. Let's listen to it again. Doesn't sound very good. Well, it's a really interesting record or uh, tape recorder, and I'd love to get it working. I'd love to listen to my own tape that I have. I, I'm not feeling very hopeful at this point. This project is too big. Project too big for me. DVD. What? Ah, yeah. So I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna stop at this point. I'm gonna leave this on my bench. I'm gonna let these things I've seen and what I've done kind of soak into my head. Maybe I'm gonna come up with some idea about how to go forward with this because it's it's getting a little bit destructive. Can I put it that way? If I go forward. Even if I solve whatever it is that's wrong, and how can I even solve it? I may not be able to get it back together again. It's too much. Too much for me. And the service manual might be useful. Okay, that's it for today. I'm going to head outside from here. Enjoy my day in the heat. So thanks a lot for watching, and uh, I may, may have the 1937 radio back on my bench tomorrow. This, this may drift away now, go away. I don't know. I'm not sure. See ya.